Okay, a couple of sample problems would be this. Basically, we have a problem here, and what we want to do is determine what these, if, if L and M are parallel, what is X? Okay, we want to find X. Well, in order to do that, we have to determine, in order for L and M to be parallel, we have to determine what these two angles, what their relationship is. Now, we've got L and M, it's cut by a transversal. What's the relationship between the two angles that have the expressions there? What is that relationship? All of those are up. No, tell me what the angle pair represents. It's how you approach these problems. You determine what the angle pair is, then say, oh, for the lines to be parallel, that angle pair has to meet this requirement. Well, this angle pair, they're exterior, they're outside the two lines, and they're on opposite sides. Opposite sides says alternate, so they're alternate exterior. Look back at your uh, alternate exterior angle theorem. You're going to find that for the two lines to be parallel, these two have to be congruent. Okay? So what are we going to do with those two expressions? If they're congruent, we set them equal to each other. So we have 5x minus 5 equals 6x minus 20. Let's go for it. I want to get my little x over to my big x, so we're going to subtract 5x from both sides. Okay, we're left with negative 5 equals 6x minus 5x is going to be x minus 20. I want that x by itself and positive. So to get it by itself, we're going to add 20 to both sides, plus 20. We're going to end up with 15 equals x. So if we plug 15 back in here, we should get that. 5 times 15 is what? This would be 75 minus 5, and that equals 70. 15 times 6 is? I think that's 90. Minus 20, that equals 70. Look at there. We got the same angle. If they're the same angle, if x is 15, then that would make these two angles congruent. Therefore, these two lines would be parallel. Okay? All right. Now, let's do another one over here. We've got another situation in which we have L and M are the vertical lines, and they're cut by a transversal. And we're given this symbol. What does this symbol right here mean? Those two lines are perpendicular. What's the measure of perpendicular lines? Of the angle? That's 90 degrees. Okay? Now, again, we're trying to find out what are those angles going to have to be, or what is x going to have to equal in order for L and M to be parallel. So what is the relationship between this angle right here and this angle right here? Look at your transversal. Are the angles on opposite sides or the same side? What's the name of that angle pair? They're on opposite sides and they're in between the two lines. In between will make it interior, opposite, in between. It's alternate interior angles. And if L and M are to be parallel, alternate interior angles have to be what? Congruent. That means this measure has to equal that measure. So we would have 3x plus 15 has to equal 90. Okay? Let's subtract the 15 from both sides. 3x equals... I think that's what? 75 x. What are we going to do? We're going to divide by 3. Both sides. x equals 75, uh, 25. So let's plug that in. 3 times 25 is 75 plus 15 equals 90 degrees. Okay? So if x equals 50, 25, then these two lines would be parallel. Okay? Proving lines parallel. What angle measure 
will allow them to be parallel. What's the value of x? What's the value of y that would allow those two lines to be parallel? Have a lot of problems in this chapter, the chapter test next week, and also throughout the year that will deal with proving lines parallel. What is the angle measure? What's the value of x and y that would make that happen? Now let's do one proof, and we'll be done with this. Since we are dealing with proofs, it's only appropriate that we would do one proof, and in the background is blues. We need proven lines, parallel blues, don't we? Somebody make some of that up, make some music up, bring it to me. We'll play it. All right, now, what we have is we have a figure here. We have lines L and M, and we have lines R and S. What we want to do is we're going to say that angle 1 is congruent to angle 5. Okay? So angle 1, we're going to mark this, angle 1 is congruent to angle 5. Alright? And then we're going to say that what? Angle 15 is congruent to angle 5. Well, if that's true, what else can we say is true? Okay? Okay? What else do we know to be true? Well, if this is congruent to that, and that's congruent to that, then that's congruent to that via the what? Transitive property, right? So let's get some of this down on over here. Statement number one, we're going to say that angle 15 is congruent to angle 5 because it is given to us. Okay, if angle 15 is congruent to angle 5, what do we already know? Okay. What do we know about 13 and 15? They're congruent lines. Well, angle 13 is congruent to angle 15. Why? Because of the vertical angle theorem. They are vertical angles, okay? All right, next one. Three, we can say that because these two are congruent and these two are congruent, then angle five is congruent to angle 13. Why? Good old transitive property. Okay? If this equals to 5, and 15 equals 5, 15 equals 13, then 5 equals 13. Okay? Now then, 13 and 5 are congruent. What do we know? Well, we could have gone right here because we're given that these are congruent. What's the relationship between 5 and 15? Opposite side, exterior, alternate exterior angles. What's the relationship between 13 and 5? They're corresponding. 13 is equal to that, then we know what? 4, R and S have to be parallel. R is parallel to S. Why? It's that converse CAP. Corresponding angle postulate. Okay? Then we can say what? We already said this. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 5. That's given. Well, if those two are congruent right here, what are they? They're corresponding angles, right? Well, what lines have to be parallel if corresponding angles are congruent? 6. L has to be parallel to M. Y, same thing. Converse, C, A, P. Converse, corresponding angle postulate. Okay? Multiple ways, as you can tell, there's multiple ways. We could use the converse alternate exterior angle postulate. Okay? Would have been pretty easy to do that also. Okay, it's a proof. Proving lines parallel. 